Hello, my name is Natalie Finley, and I'm here to tell you all about Danny Walker Center. Alright guys, so like I promised, I brought my good friend Ibby today. We're going to tell you a little bit more about Danny Walker Syndrome. So Ibby, can you tell me what exactly is Danny Walker Syndrome? Let me remember, I think we've seen that in our EI class, mm. but we also did the search and Danny Walker malformation or Danny Walker Syndrome represents a group of congenital disorder mm -hmm. of the brain development involving the cerebellum. What is the cerebellum? What is the cerebellum? Good question. The cerebellum is an area in the back of the brain, and people call it the little brain, the small brain, and it controls movement and the filled fluid spaces around it. Dandy Walker malformation is characterized by an agenesis of the brain of the cerebellum mm -hmm. vermis, mm -hmm. enlargement of the fourth ventricle, and cyst formation in the posterior fossa with or without hydrocephalus. And but what she means about the posterior fossa is in the back of our brains, inside that hard skull, and yes, inside that hard skull. And actually, one in 2,500 children are affected. And may that not might seem like a small number to parents who have children with Danny Walker syndrome. It's a big deal for them. So it's definitely an issue that we need to address. Dandy Walker is believed to be the result of multifactorial gene mutation. The presence of chromosomal anomalies could also be a risk. Congenital infections that are called teratogens could also be a cause. Dandy Walker syndrome develops in the fifth to sixth week after conception. The cause of Dandy Walker malformation could also be idiopathic and known in origin. The diagnosis of Dandy Walker malformation consists of a clinical diagnosis based on the observation of any type of seizure. The diagnosis also includes imaging such as x-ray, compute tomography, it's called CT scans, magnetic resonance imaging, MRI. Data also help with the diagnosis. Legions of the cerebellar vermis are independent predictors of expressive language and gross motor delays. Communication functions, for example, behavioral regulations, social interactions, joint attentions are initiated with physical manipulations, giving, pointing, showing, gaze shifting, head nodding, vocalizations, creating one word nouns. Children with Danny Walker syndrome have muscular hypotonia, joint hyperlexity, and delayed gross motor skills. Motor milestones for children with Danny Walker syndrome include rolling between ages 5 and 6 and 4 months, sitting independently between 8 and 5 months and 11 and 7 months, crawling between 12 and 2 months and 17 and 3 months, and walking independently between 15 and 74 months. Children with Danny Walker syndrome often have impairments in motor and language skills as well as poor muscle tone, problems with balance and coordination, and also problems with eye movement, vision, and have hearing impairments. Ivy, I'm glad you can meet with me today. Um, I just wanted to know, do you have any additional questions for me regarding your child with Danny yeah, Walker syndrome? Actually, um, my child, as you know, has a Danny Walker malformation, and I really would like to know, what am I here for? What is your role as an SLP? Who are you as an SLP, a speech language pathologist, and, and what is early intervention? Well, I'm so glad you asked. The SLP provides support. An effective home-based early intervention program for children with Dandy Walker consists of creating opportunities for the child to grow in the least restrictive environment. Teach before you treat. Let him lead and be the leader. Display oral sensory and language stimulations via interactive age-appropriate materials. Give visual, verbal, and tactile cueing whenever possible and needed. 
Don't forget the best early intervention practices that are in Children's National Hospital, MedStar Georgetown Hospital, and Early Intervention Pediatric Speech-Language Pathologist in the DC area.